So uh, yeah, I'm going to do just sort of my beginner's perspective. I got involved about I don't know, probably six, nine months ago, and uh, I ran through various different numbers of problems. So I thought I'd do a quick setup, give you a bit of an overview of where I've come from before I joined, and then a few of like the key big problems that I had. Whole point really is to try and maybe help uh, additional new people when they come in. I appreciate everything. Everybody in this room has a lot more experience than I do. So it might be a little bit of an interesting perspective for everybody. So we'll just uh, get moving. So I was an IT consultant for about 20 years, uh, do specializing in Microsoft Project Server and SharePoint, doing basically business system integration software. Unbelievably dry stuff. But uh, I guess the point is that I was a software engineer and software architect, predominantly doing C Sharp, so not necessarily the languages that we're using here. And then before I started any of the MicroMouse, my sort of making experience is, uh, one of my hobbies is wood turning. I've got a couple of 3D printers, which I've rewired. So a little bit of electronics experience from that. And so my biggest electronics project really before starting was building a Nixie clock just to try and get some soldering experience. That was all through hole components. Uh, and then lot, two years ago, uh, as a separate project to play around with some Raspberry Pis, I built an e-ink calendar to sit on my fridge because I just didn't want to take uh, my phone out to look at my calendar. And so uh, my motivation for doing MicroMouse and what got me here is the Veritasium video, which I think everyone has seen. It's got a lot to answer for. Um, made it look really fun. It made it look easy, um, <laughs> which uh, we'll come on to a little bit. Um, and another one of my motivations is to learn Python, which adds an additional layer of complication to myself. That's specifically because at the moment I've gone back to university studying astronomy. Every single piece of astronomy software is written in Python. All of the data analysis is done in Python. So trying to get more experience with that, how Python is used. Um, and I wanted to learn more about microcontrollers, which I tried to avoid right at the beginning and do more electronics, sort of an extension of 3D, uh, 3D printing. Wanted to add to my sort of design skills, if you like. Um, so I, I like this graph. I just wanted an excuse to put this in. It's very easy from the Veritasium video, I think, to uh, think it's really easy. You go, it's, on the surface, it all seems so very, very simple. Now my approach, which I probably should have said before, is I'm trying to do the hardest bit straight away and do a full maze solver because it seemed the most fun and it looks really simple just you know you've got to get some motors turning read a sensor make some decisions based on all of that and it and it's and then you get to the center of the maze and it's all fine um, and then the reality as soon as you start digging into it and finding out things that you didn't even know you needed to know is you know LEDs aren't just the same level of brightness which is sort of the strangest thing I've come across. Got different ramp up times. There's a whole idea of tuning sensors with resistors, which still seems like absolute magic to me. Um, I have to care about voltages and why the battery is a certain voltage, all this sort of stuff I didn't appreciate right at the beginning. So I think I'm maybe just about there now. <laughs> it's like I've completely gone through the, the valley of despair. I hope so. <laughs> I've gone past that, oh, this is really easy. And now, okay, start to suffer, suffer some of the pain. So I'll just go through sort of like the biggest mistakes I think I misunderstood and some of the missed assumptions I had, which from, I think people with a more electronic engineering background might, you might find somewhat humorous or, or obvious to a lot more people. Um, time, as a software engineer and the software I was doing, I very rarely cared about time beyond when the schedule was supposed to run. Um, and even some of the web stuff, you know, we're looking at milliseconds, tens of milliseconds for response times, nothing like that. And now I've got to care about microseconds processing things at least 200 plus times per second, which completely broke my brain for a little while. Um, I was sort of, oh, that picture doesn't come out very well. Um, I was spending a lot of time on things that in retrospect didn't matter or shouldn't have worried about. Uh, I really wanted the standard software debugging approach that I had because that's what I'm comfortable with, and it's nice to be able to step through code. Can't do it, so <laughs> to avoid that. Uh, again, because I was misunderstanding the time element, I tried to avoid using a microcontroller. I started off with a Raspberry Pi Zero, um, thinking that was gonna be fast enough. It's not, <laughs> it's not. Um, I spent way too long thinking I'm making progress, 
because I've got a 3D printer and 3D printers create as many problems as they solve. So I spent a lot of time making May segments and posts. It all works, it's all very nice, um, but it's not really necessary when you're trying to get it up and running and sort of start to make progress. Uh, I also had the huge misconception. I've, I can uh, do a bit of a show and tell tomorrow if people want to see the myriad of sensors that I tried to make, thinking again, that's nice and easy. LED, photodiode, plug it all in. Um, so I think I've got about six different versions of stuff that doesn't work until I just went <laughs> and used the uh, sensor balls from, uh, from UK Marsbot. Again, so they're the oh, biggest, biggest issue I think I had is thinking that some of these things were much more simple than they really are. It's, on the surface, they seem really, really quite easy. And then sort of uh, uh, moving on from those wrong assumptions I made, uh, I think this is picked up a little bit from the Veritasium video. And when you see these robots move on video, you can make, I, this is where I, I made a lot of these assumptions. You, know, you talk about ambient light correction. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Take a reading before you start your day. You know, that's a value you keep. Then the, you keep the LEDs on the whole time and you just keep reading the sensor during your cycle time. Obviously we know that's not, not how it works. Microcontrollers for me, Again, for that soft, software engineering side, it's not, it's not fundamentally different, but quite a different approach to how things work. For me, and I'll use the term wrong, multi-threading, um, the microcontrollers handle it at the hardware level, in my, in my mind. You know, if I turn a pin on, set a pin to send a signal to the motor, it'll just stay there. That was a concept that wasn't immediately obvious to me. I thought I was going to have to keep these things running and how those threads were going to work. So that was a learning experience. Uh, and then the way the interrupts work, which is more in my mind is how the multi-threading kicks in, that you can then lose information because of it. Certainly I know in the MicroMouse code, sorry, the MarsBot code that Peter's written, it's very clear that you're trying to jump through that sequence as fast as possible so that something else isn't happening and you're missing out on it. So these were sort of the, the big, big mistakes I made. Once I understood those and realized what the right answers was, then you can progress, or I think I progressed that little bit, little bit faster. Um, so after three or four months of doing it very, very wrong, <laughs> I think I've come up with an approach I would recommend to, to new people, which I think is a lot of the advice I was given at the start. So I will add that, but I was fairly stubborn, is um, it, it's not obvious. Uh, even the obvious stuff isn't as obvious as it looks. So if you were, if I was going to start again, you know, my criteria was I'm trying to learn Python, I'm trying to, you know, advance that and develop it in the way I wanted to. I should have scrapped that and gone, right, how does these, how do these things work? Take the thing that works already, which is the UK Miles bot, build that, which would have improved my soldering uh, skills, um, now, uh, which is pretty good now, but that would have worked. And then I can just load the code on because I know the code does work. And that experience would have trained, would have trained me enough, or certainly a lot more, that I then could have moved across and built what I'm attempting to build now a lot easier and a lot faster. Or if you really, really want to not <laughs> follow the path and um, do it the other way, I spent way too long trying to build sensors. They're just too hard unless you really know what you're talking about. Like Duncan's going to give us, I think, some fantastic information in the next session. So take the sensor board that someone know that you know works. Um, get a motor working, get it driving in a straight line, which I think is advice I got from three people before, I'd <laughs> before I even did that. Um, and then put all of that together and start that way. Really, what I'm saying is don't do it the way I've done it. So this is hopefully useful for some people. And the maze, I put way too much thought and time and effort. Uh, and I'm glad, I mean, I've got a good result now that I can use moving forward, but it was limiting my learning time and cycle time of, of improving. So get the vinyl stickers or the wrap from Amazon or eBay, you know, black vinyl and the white vinyl, and then use anything to stick it to, to create a wall and a floor. Um, Cause I found out the MDF will bow when you paint one side of it. So that causes a different problem. Trying to drill holes in the right place. I think, oh, it's easy. I'll just 3D print a jig. You know, I don't need to do that. It just took too much time. You can just stick stuff down, make it out of cardboard. So, um, that's probably the biggest advice for people is just don't worry about the maze. It's the, the least important part of getting the robot to move because you can make that almost out of anything. 
and you, that's what was almost the last one, you don't need as many tools as you think, uh, which I think maybe is, is a, a barrier to entry for some people. I know everyone, we all love tools. I think everyone's got, would have probably agree they've got more than they need. But beyond, <laughs> all right, we always want more tools. But <laughs> beyond, uh, you know, actually having the components, you don't really need much. I don't think, at least, as long as you've got soldering iron, some wire cutters, and a multimeter to check whether you've short-circuited anything, um, you can build it and get going. The, probably the most critical thing to have is patience, because certainly this week I've nearly thrown mine out of the window four times, so. Um, and I'm not, that's not right. So that was, I was gonna end on that. Is that even playing? <laughs> that did that did work. Uh, I was going to. Uh, oh no, no, that's going to go. So that yeah, that was it. I was going to end with proof that my first robot did actually work. But <laughs> uh, uh, maybe that's a fitting end that it's on its side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, that's a really wonky picture. So uh, probably the other big mistake I made was making the robot way too big. You know, start, even if you just started with the UK Mars bought PCB and use that as a frame, which is what I've now done for my second one, just because it fits inside of the maze doesn't, doesn't mean it's going to work very well. But I did, did get that one to work once. So, <laughs> and I've got it on film. But uh, yeah, I can show that maybe at some point over the weekend. And there we go. I'll try and keep it nice and short because I know Duncan's got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I think um, those of us who have been doing this for a little while can empathise greatly with, with Paul's discovery. It's not as easy as it looks. Uh, we do try to make it look easy. Um, and <laughs> yeah, before he disappears, does anybody um, have any questions about the, the process or the... Or, or what Paul's discovered, or he's made some very good points, right? So perhaps in some respects, the most significant point is if you want to build a maze solving robot, almost literally the last thing you want to worry about is the maze. But it's usually the first thing to worry about. I know, right? It's up close to the big It's, 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 it's the core worry. of the contest, but actually you can get everything working even without any walls, and then you can just take a bit of wood to the floor uh, and the code to actually deal with the maze solving is literally the last thing that you need to write because if you can't do all the other stuff, it doesn't yeah. matter whether there's a maze or not. So, Paul, yeah. did you end up writing it in Python and then what's your process there? Yes, so I've, uh, I said writing is maybe a stretch, but I've converted all of the UK Milesbot C code to Python. Right. Um, oh. That video that I does run. Um, yeah. He's basically running a Python version of the UK Marsbot code, uh, and my new robot is doing do the same. It's not quite, I do want to then share it with everybody because it's a Python version of the code that Peter's put together. Yeah. It's not quite in a state where I would uh, happily say it works and can be used by others, but that is my intention is to, to have to pass it across. And what processor are you running on? It's yeah. all running on um, an RP2040. So the first one was running on a Pico. Yeah. It doesn't have enough ADC inputs. I've, two weeks ago, I finally found a way of getting the Arduino RP2040 Connect to work with Visual Studio Code, which is more painful than I wanted it to be, but it works with Visual Studio Code, so I can use that. That has, well, it's claimed to have eight ADCs, and I'm hoping someone here can help me get the other four to work. Oh, well, I can get it, four. Can, it has six, really. <laughs> I can do this, I can do a five, I can get four of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they've just updated microphone. Oh, yeah, I think they've just updated microphone, but there's also the sample code that I sent out to Python that directly talks to the, to the, uh, to the, to the Wi Fi chip to read it. They're not all the same chip. And they're on two separate chips. Two separate chips. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean one of them, and some of them are shared on to other people. Yeah, I mean, you just read it over serial interface. There's a, there's a Python sample project that I've got. But I think they've actually put the code into the latest. I have changed it. Right. 
you know, I still couldn't get it to work on. Right, I'm going to first four to work, which is better because the right. code there's, there's a piece of microphone where I just, I think, where it kind of spies it or whatever it is. But okay. I just talked to it, I just like effects the values. And I've got exact code, microphone, and handy for to do that. I'll review that. Yeah. Anything? Did that answer your question, then? Uh, The board. That you're using is it the connect board? It is. <coughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I've not tried that one. Um, yeah. It might not be the board I continue to use. In theory, it's got all the bits I want on it. And if I can get the other ADC, I need one more ADC at the moment. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm using that board on the UK website with the with C C plus plus. Um, yeah. That's fine. You yeah. can get it's, it's it's everything. It's lacking functionality. Microfiber. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's, that's all. So, but it's not. It's not a large file. 